Guys, it's your boy Black Rube back with another video. We're going to be talking Steam Change AMA today. But first, Q Indigo Saint. Let's get it. Indigo Saint in the building. Black Rube investing. Let's go. Misbeliever was black who invested With your money you ain't gotta be guessing Profits is what we manifested So we binge on a black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested Got caught in this race, we ain't resting We got stocks, we got crypto with a blessing So thank God for that black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested My man, Indigo So I know you guys haven't heard from me in a while And uh, the reason you haven't is I had a stroke It was pretty bad um, It was three weeks ago Facial droop, uh, couldn't talk straight, couldn't walk right, couldn't use my right hand, couldn't use my right shoulder. Um, pretty miraculous, but um, you know I'm gonna bring out a little book about it and everything. But um, let me know if you're um, experiencing any type of stroke issues out there. Um, I have some alternative therapies and some um, exercise things that were very helpful for me. And um, I'll let you guys know that um, when I bring out the book, the book will cost a little bit because, you know, your boy does have kids. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, if you guys want to just ask me personally, I'll, I will never turn you down if you need um, help there because the alternative therapies I did helped me come back in three weeks. Like, believe me, if I showed you guys the list, you wouldn't believe that I'm sitting here right now talking to you. But, um. Enough about that. Let's talk Steam Exchange. I just wanted you guys to know why I wasn't here, and why you've been missing me for three months. Cause even though I posted it places, not everybody knows. So let's go. Okay. So Steam Exchange. I have a list of notes here on my phone because your boy can't write that well just yet. Even though I can kind of, you know, bend it, bend my right hand, move my thumb, stuff like that. But I can't write just well just yet. So, um, I got the AMA pulled up so I can just have you listen and show receipts at the exact spots. When I say show receipts, I mean I want to play it exactly from the Steam Exchange guy's mouths so you know I'm just not making up stuff. So, um... This part really, 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 really intrigued me. Um, I'm going to explain it first, let Neville explain it, and then I'm going to tell you why it's very important. So, you know that the Steam Exchange are working with the guys from University of Waterloo, right? Guys from University of Waterloo, they're a prestigious university in Canada, which is where the Steam Exchange is going to be. Uh, Canada has like a moat for um, exchanges there because uh, there was an exchange that did some illegal stuff there, which was like the biggest exchange in Canada. That thing got axed, of course. So there are not a lot of big exchanges in, excuse me, in Canada right now. So Steam Exchange can come up in there and fill a need, all right? Just going to review that a little bit because maybe you guys don't know about Steam Exchange. If you want to know more, come on to Steam Exchange's website and uh, um, their YouTube. And you can come over here and listen to all their AMAs. Look at your boy Black Ruse uh, page. I have a uh, playlist for Steam Exchange. Um, it may be a little bit quicker to watch my two or three videos. Then to go through all the AMAs, um, um, amazing project here, but let me go on. So they have a partnership with University of Waterloo where they're basically going to develop this gamified learning project. Now the gamified learning project is going to do a plethora of things, right? The gamified learning is going to allow us or whoever's, you know, going to be Steam Exchange investors to be accredited investors 
and that's going to put us in line for things like the uh, launch pad and different things on on the steam exchange and it's really going to be kind of paramount and central to their ecosystem to become an accredited investor and to participate in the gamified learning and this gamified learning by the university of waterloo is going to be research that they're going to publish and curate and um, use for various purposes um, there's also a college that's going to be helping with game design as well um, that college is shared in college also in canada now the way it breaks down is there's one professor overseeing the project two professors overseeing a student and a student is a phd student so in total there are three professors and a student on the project that student is a phd student okay and a particular portion that's doing this uh particular particular portion of the college and guys my speech is back but it's not all the way back so i might stumble on a little bit of words or i may be just a little slow with my speech or something like that so keep that in mind um so the specific part of the college or the university excuse me that they're work, working with is the stratford school of interaction design and business very key remember that stratford school of Inter interaction design and business so they have three objectives for their research the attitude and the sentiment of investors in investing in crypto evaluating um, participants in the research game for learning and then kind of evaluating design and now you're going to hear this from Neville. I listen to this normally in one and a half times speed, and I listen to it like a couple times over because um, that just helps me uh, do things really quickly. It helps me uh, retain the info better. Uh, I'll try to listen to everything in one and a half times speed. It really just, once you train your body to do that, you can get more done in a day. That's just a recommendation from your boy, Black Rue. But uh, we're going to play it. I want to play it at one and a fourth time speed so it's a little bit faster. And let me make sure all the volume is up. That's not working well for some reason. Let me turn it up here. Okay, here we go. That's the University of Waterloo. Uh, I would say back in uh, September last year, maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, so the three objectives that we identified, uh, number one, is to research the attitude uh, and sentiment of investors towards crypto, uh, conduct a few surveys, uh, and do some follow-up interviews. Objective number two, uh, design uh, of all the gamified elements, all the material, the test material, and the content. And then objective three is the evaluation of experienced investors in gamified learning. So once the game is in production, uh, in some form or fashion, we would have a beta, and the evaluation of the participants in that beta uh, would be similar to objective one, uh, to see how their sentiments and attitudes have changed. So the data from objective one uh, it has to be submitted to uh, for review uh, via an ethical application. So that's going to go to the ethics review board at the university. Uh, the results of that research uh, is going to be published during the CHI conference 2022 uh, in September. Uh, the CHI conference is an event for CHI. So we're going to have to look up the CHI conference. Let me see here. Good. It is on the right screen. Let me see if we can find CHI conference. Sorry, I'm kind of doing this one-handed right now. 2022. Okay. Chai Conference. Okay, is it the Chai Conference or Kai? Kai Symposium. Yep, this is it. Kai. Okay.
Okay, so this seems to be more it. Not shy the Kai. Okay, I'm not sure about the Kai Conference. I had to do a little bit more research on that. Get back to you, but it looks like this is the Kai Foundation. And that that little stuff that we saw here in the different language, that was referring to the one in September that they're talking about. Uh, I wonder if I can find... Yeah, I had to do a little bit more research on that and give back to you guys. I guess it's not completely important right now, but it's like a digital conference. This is in a different language, of course, but. Okay. Whatever. We'll get back to it another time, but okay. So thing that was really important to me there is that they're gathering the uh, information, right? They're gathering the data. They're doing this research and crib on um, the attitude and the sentiment of investors towards crypto. Now to me, that's gonna be very, very, very valuable information. Uh, valuable in the sense of uh, if we think of marketing right if I know your attitude and sentiment towards crypto I can market crypto better to you um, I'll know what you like and what you don't like about crypto investments um, I'll know what better to market you in a launch pad I'll know what companies you like better um, to me this seems like very 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 valuable data not only educating the user about crypto, but educating the um, the data miners about how to better market to you. So um, there's a twofold and synergistic investment there. It's uh, building and filling the gap on uh, investors to crypto. So bringing new investors to crypto, but also also, the data miners know how to better market crypto to you, how to better sell crypto to you. It's just very, very valuable data in my mind. Also, um, evaluating, yeah, so evaluating the, the guys in the game about crypto, um, yeah, that, that's also a very good thing. But let's 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 run that video back one more time. Oh, I got so many freaking tabs open here. My apologies, guys. Here we go. So let's hear it again from Neville one more time. All stemmed back when you know Chris first announced the University of Waterloo. Uh, I would say back in. Uh, September last year, maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, so the three objectives that we identified, uh, number one, is to research the attitude uh, and sentiment of investors towards crypto, uh, conduct a few surveys, uh, and do some follow-up interviews. Objective number two, uh, design uh, of all the gamified elements, all the material, the test material, and the content. And then objective three is the evaluation of experienced investors in gamified learning. So once the game is in production, uh, in some... Okay, so... In former fashion, we will have a beta and the... Design of the game... And evaluation of the participants in that beta uh, would be similar to objective one at and that valuation of participants in the game file learning so also there's a nice bit of data there to evaluate how games teach people um, that's a, that's really really valuable data because any games released we will now know uh, the, the data miners will now know how apt games are on teaching people and we could possibly see a shift in schooling to gamified learning 
that's that's a that could be a possibility. Um, a lot of people play games now. Um, I'm sure they did they mine data on how people react and feel from those games as well. So um, that's something to keep in mind. But big thing is going to be the attitude and sentiment of investors towards crypto, and the surveys that they do there are going to be huge not only for educating investors it's going to be huge also for getting tendencies sentiments and um just overall feelings of investors towards crypto that's very very valuable data um i'm not sure if these guys are going to approach it from that aspect but the aspect is there and you cannot deny it so i have to say it um so there's that um, and that was the biggest thing for me by far here. Um, we go on some, into some other things where Neville says this will be, uh, level one will be available in September. And then um, Gary goes into saying the launch of the entire, because this guy was supposed to be um, the... The uh, Steam Exchange was supposed to be one launch in the quarter two, but they also let us know it may not be until quarter four. Honestly, the way the market is right now, I don't care if they don't launch right now. In fact, I would prefer it because it would just it would put themselves as a company at a disadvantage to launch in this negative negative uh, crypto market space right now. Which is Gary again being full transparent. He said launch will take market into account, and of course, we will be fully transparent. And they did, and they are. So, also, Neville mentioned they would be coming up on a one year anniversary pretty soon, and only 15% of crypto companies make it a year. So, that means that's really big. Now, I'm going to go over a phrase that Gary says a lot in, in this video, or he says a couple times, I think. They're not a project, they're a company. Not sure exactly what he means by this, but I can speculate. I think he means by that, that being a company, they are subject to more rules and regulations and if we look at everything that's happening with certain companies like Celsius, Luna, um, certain of these companies are getting like Binance. Um, certain of these companies are kind of getting uh, looked at by regulators. Um, certain of these companies are getting kind of exploited um, and by what Gary's saying that they're not a project, they're a company, they're subject to no more um, regulations, more rules. So when you're looking at that, chances are they're more apt to be around because they're doing things above board and the right regulated way. Hence, they're a company, not a project, because a project may just do things to make money out the gate and that's it they're not subject to the same rules as a company so that's what i'm thinking he means by that it says the trading platform is uh 80 to 90 percent complete that came from chris um and chris will also update us on the website and on the next ama about the progress of all the modules for the website uh, one thing that Gary mentioned was um, that these modules are developed kind of as modules, meaning, uh, I don't know if you guys are programmers, but uh, uh, I'm a programmer, I do C++, and modular programming is kind of a thing for like C++ programming, for object-oriented programming. And one of the tenets of object-oriented programming is reusability. The way I can kind of layman this is like, think about cars. 
um, if you're working on certain cars, like, let's say, like most like American model cars, like, let's say, for instance, like a Ford, maybe. Um, certain pieces on every Ford are modeled to be used on every Ford. So um, they're modeled to be reusable. So um, if you need an alternator, you take out that alternator, you can get another alternator. Um, if you need another, I don't know, fuel, like, like compressor for your air conditioner, it's modeled to be reusable. You can take that air compressor out and put in another air compressor. It's not like a one shot thing where it's like model for only that car. And if it breaks, you got to get a custom new air compressor made. No. Air compressors, every model of that type are reusable. If you went to a junkyard and found an old car that had a good compressor, you can use, we can reuse that compressor on your car. That's kind of a, it's not the best analogy, but that's kind of the analogy. If one piece of code kind of broke down, like say my air compressor stopped in my car, that doesn't mean my car stopped. That means my air condition stops, but my car still runs. So um, in this instance, all the code in uh, Steam Exchange is built to be modular. So if that specific piece of code doesn't work, they can fix that piece of code, but they don't have to shut down the whole um, exchange. So that, in that way, the code being modular, that's really, really good. Cause I don't know if you know that like Solana at one point, they had too many requests they had to shut down the entire Solana blockchain in order to fix it, address some problems, and get it going again. Based on these guys, the way they're creating it, and they're going to have their own blockchain, by the way, called the Rails Exchange. By the way, they're creating modular. They can keep the exchange going, and have certain pieces or certain um, little little uh, distinction certain areas break down the exchange can keep running and they can just work on that specific module uh, hence like my example with the air compressor my car won't stop if my air compressor is dead only my air conditioning will stop they can go and they can fix the little air conditioning part but my car itself will continue to run okay so there's the example there. And then a very important question, guys, about launch pads that I want you to hear that um, Gary answered, because I've been talking for a long time here. It might be better to hear uh, someone else's voice. So there's a question being la asked about launch pads and who will benefit from it or another or how exactly it's going to operate because there are now more options at hand rather than what we had before so to further what you're saying yeah i think i think this deserves its own uh somewhat ama okay here it comes then. can you hear me loud and clear okay okay thank you so much much i uh, really appreciate what you guys are doing I really want to quickly ask, I was already typing on the chat when you call on me. I want to find out, please, that um, after migration to the exchange platform, are the community having any form of advantage on any new project that are to be listed on the exchange? So, if you're trying to compare us to a launch pad that every... So, the way he listed that question was really, really uh, passive. So I'm going to say that to y'all just again so y'all can know it because the way he said that question was a little weird. Basically, he said, will the community have any exchange on any advantage on new uh, on new projects listed on a platform? Basically, will the community be first to have dibs on uh, 
projects listed on the launch pad. to the exchange platform are the community having any form of advantage on any new project that are to be listed on the exchange so if you're trying to compare us to a launch pad that everybody knows of uh, in that sense we are against the philosophy of that so we want everybody to have the same opportunity across the board and in, in, in that so basically Gary says no, and I'm going to get more into his answer, and he gives reasons, and so does Neville, specific reasons why it's a no on that. And he said, launch pass that everybody knows, because he cannot name projects, but your boy can, so I will. Um, so there's a few different launch pads where the community gets in first, and they have a huge advantage on projects and can pump, can uh, get in on those projects and dump them and have a really huge advantage on making a lot of money on projects. Okay. Uh, so the community can get in first and have a, a huge advantage on getting projects first. Um, you might think, okay. That would be nice we're, if we're some of the first investors on this community. Uh, we should be able to get into these projects first. But let me let me just go back and show you some examples and tell you some examples. And you can do your own research on this because I'm not going to show receipts about this right now because I don't want this video to be too long. But I can tell you uh, projects that have worked this way like Gary's going to say later, only the people who invested early really got the big benefits from it. and Everybody else were screwed. And on top of this, some people got private access to these tokens, not, not the Steam Exchange, the launch pass that I'm going to tell you about. Because nobody got private access to Steve Exchange tokens. They didn't do that. That's a really good, good, like, feather in their cap. They did not do private tokens to anybody. And they did not do private tokens to the team. So. One launch pad. Um, card starter. Your boy, big boy have private access to this guy and he pumped it up and so many people lost money and only the people that got in first via a few different things and people like big boy who had private access to coins only they got only they were able to benefit from these new projects and that really is is i was about to say a bad word y'all uh so that's really really crappy because now it says anybody after the early investors who find out about the project they can't really invest or they're buying the token at a very 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 huge premium and they can't if they can't take advantage of new projects whatsoever not just they can't at all so i'm really liking the way that they're doing this because it will incentivize other people to come aboard steam exchange otherwise only the people who are here early and you guys who are here early like me you might think oh but we should get something maybe we probably will get something like there's other advantages of being early like we're going to be able to mine the coin, Steam Exchange, and all of this other stuff. So we do kind of have some early incentives already where it's not like this early incentive about the um, about the um, launch pad. So another one that was like that was um, Polkadot's launch pad, which name is gonna, gonna like escape me. Let's go look at it right here. Polkadot's launch pad. I cannot remember the name of it right now. 
Oh my god. This is gonna burn me up. Where is Polka dot? Polka swap. I think it's Polka swap. Hold on one second. It's important that we find it. And I can also show you what happened to Card Starter with Big Boy doing his little thing of pumping and dumping. Polka Starter, that's what it's called. Polka Starter. So when this boy first came out, it said 45 cents now. I'll show you the pump and dubbing that kind of private people got the first advantage. Okay, it's like $6 a coin. And I think Pokestarter did a little bit more fear of a launch than uh, Cardstarter. Um, but still, the first people in got a really unfair advantage. Now let's see card starter. You guys are going to really, it's going to almost be gross when you see like how much Big Boy pumped this up and how people were kind of locked out. And if you kind of got in while he pumped it up, oh man, you're just going to be mad right now. Let's look at card starter. For some reason, I'm not clicking this right. Oh my God, guys, bear with me. I gotta get a mouse here. Oh boy, card starter, 41 cents. I cannot even believe it. Look at this, now watch how gross this is gonna be. And really this is wrong. It was $100 a, a, a coin. So your boy Big Boy got private tokens in this. He pumped it all the way to eighty dollars. So and believe me, they were saying like if you wanted to be a member of this, you needed like a thousand things or something like that, or a hundred. Oh man, this is just gross. Even if it said you needed fifty to be able to be a part of a launch pad. 50 of those at $80. Oh my God. But your boy Bit Boy pumped it all the way to this. And now it's worth 47 57 cents. Oh my God. Um, but yet, people, people, people love that guy. <laughs> but, anyways, this goes to the owner's point. This goes to Gary's point. Um, only people that got in in the beginning, and I'm sure Big Boy had private, um, private uh, coins to card starter. He pumped it all the way to that. So only people in the beginning get an advantage from that. But let's listen to Gary and then what Neville says, why they're doing this. It's very important. In that sense, right? We don't want someone to benefit just solely from that because what happened with that launch pad, it's, it's kind of sad. It only benefited the community members of that launch pad and nobody else, right? And uh, it, it really is damaging to any problem. See what he's saying? And I already showed you two launch pads that, that operated that way. There's some other ones by uh, Bluezilla who uh, did that with launch pads. And those launch pads now are sitting at like sub penny and they pumped and dumped on people too. And you had providers, you had uh, guys out there pumping Bluezilla all the time, and they just pumped and dumped on people. Sad, 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 sad. <laughs> but uh, this is exactly Gary's point. This is exactly his point. He can't name names, but I just named names. Uh, card starter, poke starter, uh, freaking Ada Pad, all those. Um, Bluezilla ones, they kind of pumped and dumped on us too. And I was in a couple of those where, like, they were good for a hot second. And then they pumped and dumped on me too. So, I got got with a couple of those, like, Ada Pad. But, um, here we go. Project that launches on that type of launch pad. Neville, did you want to go into detail, perhaps, on, on why that is not the direction that we want to go with? And we would leave it open for everybody that's 
uh, on a on our blockchain and using our using our coin. For sure, uh, it ties into the learning modules, right? And we mentioned that one of the rounds uh, of the launch, uh, our project launch, would be or could be qualified investors only. Uh, so instead of incentivizing someone who invested in our token. Uh, just for the purposes of participating in a presale, we would incentivize people uh, who are part of our, in our ecosystem who took the time to, to go through our learning modules uh, and get that accredited investor status. So what that does is, well, sorry, well, well, what that does is uh, it allows for the project owner who's going to be launching that project uh, to feel confident in knowing that the investors that are investing in the project uh, know what they're doing, number one, and then number two, have done adequate research uh, based on what they've learned through our learning modules. So we didn't like the... Uh, so basically what Neville said is they want to incentivize people who go through the gamify learning. Now, uh, again, early investors are like probably really upset, but guess what? Early investors, you do have an advantage with the mining. You really do. So it's not like you're not getting anything. If you're an early investor and you learn how to do the mining, you're getting advantage before anybody else who comes in because anybody who else comes in later, they're not mining. You, you're mining first. Um, so, but this does another thing. It lets the people who invest, who invest in the uh, education, the gamified learning, it gives them a, uh, how do you say, how do I wanna say it? Like, it gives them, some, them a basis of education, which lets them know what they're investing in and that what they're investing in is valuable. And um, it also kind of just lets them know, like hopefully this leads to diamond hands is basically the end of that. Um, you wanna give the Gamify learners the ability to invest in these tokens. And it, 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 it also benefits people for being on the ecosystem so now the people who spent more time on the Steam Exchange ecosystem and who've put the time into becoming accredited investors are educated and should have more diamond hands in holding these launchpad tokens. So that's basically it. But let's go to his, he had a second point. Not only that they would uh, know what they're doing, but he had a second point. Let's, let's do that again. It's, it's kind of sad. It only benefited the community members of that launchpad and nobody else, right? And uh, it, it really is damaging to any project that launches on that type of launchpad. Neville, did you want to go into detail perhaps on, on why that is not the direction that we want to go with and we would leave it open for everybody that's uh, on, a, on our blockchain and using our, using our coin? For sure. Uh, it ties into the learning modules, right? And we mentioned that one of the rounds uh, of the launch, a uh, project launch, would be or could be qualified investors only. Uh, so instead of incentivizing someone who invested in our token uh, just for the purposes of participating in a presale, we would incentivize people uh, who are part of our, in our ecosystem who took the time to, to go through our learning modules uh, and get that accredited investor status. So what that does is well, sorry. Well, well, what that does is uh, it allows for the project owner who's going to be launching that project uh, to feel confident in knowing that the investors that are investing in the project uh, know what they're doing, number one. And then number two, have done adequate research. And have done adequate research. So Research uh, based on what they've learned second, from our learning modules. So we didn't like the... Uh, the second part of that is, and it's just like I said, that you're hoping that they'll have more diamond hands because they know what they're doing and they've done adequate research on uh, crypto, on coins, and they should know the value of what they're investing in. So that's very important. So they had a few other questions here. In the coming weeks, you'll know how to do the mining. Um, Remember, this project has mining. I've already mentioned it earlier in the video. And um, basically, someone asked another question about what the university will be doing. Maybe they must have got in late or something. But um, the University of Waterloo is working on an AI elements of the game. College is working, Sheridan College is working on game design. And also, this is a very important point. Realize that it's not going to be cookie cutter since it's going to be AI. 
for instance, they'll do a little polling or surveying to see kind of where your knowledge is. And then they'll give you a specified AI generated game path for you that will be different than the AI generated game path for someone who's never heard of crypto, never invested in crypto before, which will be different from the game generated path from someone who's kind of invested in crypto, but was more about a stocks and more it's more of a stock guy, which will be different from you got it like, like those type of people, right? Um, and also if you become accredited or you don't become accredited, if you don't become accredited, you can always go back and continue learning until you are accredited. Okay. And then Chris is going to put some of the latest deliverables on the website. So they may be on there now. I didn't check. Uh, and I'm not going to go check it. You guys can go ahead and check this afterwards. Uh, it's going to be a little bit for me to kind of get my, my mousing right with my right hand. So I'm not going to go try to mouse to it and type it all in because it will be so slow. <laughs> um, but as I kind of improve my health more, guys. Uh, I'll be able to do that again. My apologies. Um, this is the Steam Exchange AMA. And just to recap it for me, uh, the, the research that the university is going to be pulling, um, for me, that's really big time. Because um, it's going to be big time for the people who are doing the... Um, Credited stuff to gamify learning. They're going to learn more about crypto and they're going to become crypto investors But more than that the data miners are going to know how to better advertise and put crypto in front of you and know What projects different people tend to invest in what projects are the best to kind of start That value that that data is going to be extremely extremely valuable so guys, let me know what you think about the AMA. Um, let me know if you think there's anything I missed on the AMA. Uh, please put some comments in the description below. Let me know what you think of the review. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And then come down here and check out some of my previous videos right here. It's kind of a long one, but it's very important we got in all this information. Have a good one, guys. Peace.